gentlemen, and welcome to Epic Veterans Memorial Stadium for today's showdown between the Rockin' Boxers and your Epic Crimson Tide. There he is, he's coming in now. Walking. Run. Put a little hustle to your step. No urgency in his walk. <laughs> I hope you're not recording. Number nine, Louis Norisario. And number 55, John Malloy. All right, good. Yeah, get that out. Let's go, let's go. I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. Good afternoon, Brockton Boxers fans, young and old. This is Brian Madden. It's going to be a battle here today. We'll, uh, we'll see if the Crimson Tide can roll on. 
Low kick handled at the 13 yard line by number three of the Crimson Tide. A nice return all the way up to the 41 before he went for a ride down by number three, Got the first look of the day at the Crimson Tide offense. An immediate handoff to number four, Clarence Jules, senior running back, 5'9, a buck 75. Six yard gain on the play, second down and four. And we'll see how, uh, what type of game Brockton is going to play today. They've pretty much mixed it up with passing and running up to this point. We'll see what's working. Hopefully everything's working today. In the gun is the Everett quarterback. Duke Darty, and it's a run to Jules again. A loss of about four yards. It'll be third and six. Gang tackled by the Brockton defense, led by uh, Sean O'Brien as well as uh, a few others. Crimson Tide in their red jerseys, gold and black trim around the white numbers and gold helmets with the Crimson E on the side. Boxers in there visiting all white jerseys, black trim around the maroon numbers. Darting pass for the first time, almost intercepted. Pass is incomplete. Fantastic defense by um, Diamond Blakely. And Diamond Blakely got in there quickly, broke that play up. So, Rockford's gonna need a lot more of that, but it's fourth down and six, punting situation. Back deep is, for the boxes, I believe that's a Johnny 16. Horn. No, that's going 20. to be Isaiah Laguerre that would have been back to receive, but it's touched down after a short kick at the 30-yard line. That's where we'll have the first look of the day at an off-and-on boxer's offense, Brian. Last week, not so hot. The week before that against Lynn Classical, they were on. Yes, they were. And it was unfortunate they weren't able to pull off the win. But uh, they have a tough opponent to face today, Everett. Four receivers set. Amik Watterson to Devontae Medley's right. He gets a screen pass that would have technically been a lateral as it went backwards. Gets back to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, it was a lateral. Good thing he was able to bring that in and get back to the line of scrimmage. Gain one yard on the play. Beautiful afternoon here on the North Shore for this matchup. 77 degrees with a slight breeze coming in off of Boston Harbor. Trips to the near side in this five receiver set for Devontae Medley. Medley back to pass, short, complete to Amik Waters. And he picks up the first down. And that was a good, good play call. Hitting, hitting uh, Medley out. Hitting Watterson out in the, in the flat. He's able to uh, turn it upfield and pick up that first down. Oh, did they not give it to him? Oh, they marked him out. That's a terrible spot at the 40 yard line. They're gonna call him a yard shy. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Well, the boxer's gonna Go for it on third and one. Medley under center for, I think, the first time this season. He's gonna keep it himself, picks up a, a push in. That should be enough to get him the first down at the 38 yard line. 
And that was a good call as far as the uh, quarterback sneak, even though it wasn't a sneak. It was, uh, hey, it was a power, power play. My offensive line against your defensive line. Offensive line one. And the push from the fullback end, Dameek Watterson, helped Devontae Medley get across the line. That was Navon Reed on the far side. So it's the first target for Navon Reed on the afternoon. And I'll tell you, uh, the boxers really need to try and score first because um, playing catch up, whatever, is going to be a tough, tough hill to climb. The two winningest high school football programs in Massachusetts State history. The end around give to Isaiah Laguerre. He has a game of about eight. And that was a good run by Laguerre, right up the middle. Broke a couple tackles and was able to. Uh, It appears that he did get the first down based on where the uh, line judges are. I think they are going to give it to him. It's going to be a first down for the boxers. And the Crimson Tide coach is upset that they're not measuring. But it, it was pretty evident that um, they had passed the 48-yard uh, line giving them the first down. Trips to the far side for the boxers. Medley back in the shotgun. Medley back to pass over the middle. He's got Navon Reed up close to the first down. It'll be a gain of about eight, eight and a half yards. And fantastic. Second and short. Yes, fantastic pass and play. And Navon Reed caught that low and was able to turn up field to Amik Watterson. He's got enough for the first down. And our Brockton boxers are looking good right now on this drive. Hopefully they can maintain this momentum and continue to move the sticks. Medley back to pass. He's in trouble. He's going to be hit. Scrambled forward for a gain of four yards. Second down for Well, the guy on the sideline for Everett that sticks out to me is Angel Montano Velasco. He's 5'10 and 435. Yeah, that's a big boy. Surprised he's not on the defensive line. Now Medley just. Chucks it over to Navon Reed. Reed's got a hole. Navon Reed all the way down to the 11 line. Taken down by number 46, the uh, senior, Kamari Jones. And Kamari Jones canceled that touchdown because Navon was on his way. So it's a first and 10 from the 11 yard line for the boxers medley. Back to pass, over the middle, touchdown boxers. Trey Shula Hall on the reception. Devin Forts on the reception. And what's the call? Let's check out what the white cap has to say. Uh, they're bringing that one back. And that was a great call.
the what would have been a touchdown reception for Devin Forts comes back. And it will be That was good play execution by the boxers on what would have been the touchdown to Forts, who found a hole. You don't look at Forts as one of the top targets for Devontae Medley when he's got so many weapons in Isaiah Laguerre, Navon Reed, Shula Hall, Amik Watterson, and the list goes on. But he's always a threat. He's always a threat to um, you know, make a reception and get in there and get it done. This one incomplete. Intended for Isaiah Laguerre. Eli August on the coverage. Second down. So it'll be now second and 15 for the boxers. Give to Isaiah Laguerre. Laguerre's got a hole racing to the end zone. Touchdown, Boxers. Isaiah Laguerre from about 16 yards out. And the Boxers draw first blood. And that's, that's fantastic for um, the Boxers to come away with the first points up here in enemy territory, Everett Memorial Stadium. So I know they've had trouble with um, extra points. Let's see. Um, if uh, Hamilton Baptista has cleaned up some things. Ball well, snap, the kick is up, and the kick is good. Seven nothing boxers in this heavyweight matchup. This is the second season for Everett's head coach, Theluxen Pierre, of course, replacing DiBiaso, the longtime head coach who had three, north of 300 wins for the Crimson. Resigning one day later, saying that he's gonna coach down at Catholic Memorial in West Roxbury. There's not too many people up here are happy with that decision. Yeah, that's a fine how do you do uh, for um, him to um, go to Catholic Memorial, who also is a formidable team. You know, they're very strong in, in, in uh, Mass Eastern, uh, Eastern side of Massachusetts. But we'll see what happens with Everett if um, the coaching change affects them as far as numbers wise. It doesn't appear so at this point because they are three and one. For Isaiah Laguerre, that more than doubled his rushing total on the season. A 16 yard touchdown carry, 14 yards coming into this game. Amik Watterson, the running back to kick off. A nice kickoff from Amik Watterson. And it's going to drop into the end zone for a touchback. And it almost looked like it might have um, bounced straight up in the air and kind of died right there around the one or the two yard line. But it did roll forward into the end zone. But a great kick nevertheless. Flag thrown from way in the secondary. I think the boxers have too many men on the field. They do. So five yard penalty, first and five now for the Crimson Tide. A run. And a nice hole for number 26. He could go all the way if he can get past number six of the boxers. He's gonna be stopped at the one. Jaden Clairvo on the carry, the sophomore running back. And I'll tell you, that, that uh, tackle reminds me of um, Ben Watson running downfield and tackling um, 
Who was it that he tackled? I know you remember. I was back in my young days in, in Watson's <laughs> first stint with the Patriots. <laughs> Quick run, and it's a touchdown for the Crimson. Clairvo finishing the work that he started on the previous play. And Crimson Tide is about to tie it up if they're able to make this extra point and a mat in less than 30 seconds. Abraham Betancourt to kick it. The ball is snapped, the kick is up, and the kick is good. We're all knotted up. Both teams punching it home on their first drives of the day where it's seven to seven, 5.32 to go in the first quarter. And that was an outstanding run by uh, a running back, Clarence Jules. Ran for 65 yards down to uh, the one yard line. Meek Watterson back to return the kickoff for Brockton. <laughs> the ball blowing off the tee. I wouldn't say it's windy, but it's, it's a strong breeze coming in. Yes. <laughs> And that helped the kickoff fall at the 18 yard line as Mick Watterson trying to dodge holes. He breaks a handful of tackles. It takes half the Crimson to bring him down at the 30 yard line. Yeah, Mick Watterson. Uh... Oh, that was Laguerre. And you can see that kickoff. Was it Mark Watterson? It was Watterson. The kickoff looked like it could have fallen at the five if there was no wind, but that breeze just came in and it really down. hit a wall. Yeah. Five twenty-three to go in the first quarter. Medley in the shotgun for receiver set. They give to Amik Watterson. Now it's a quarterback keeper for Devonte Medley, and he's got a first down. And we go back to the issues that Devonte Medley has had throughout the first couple of games this season, in hesitating whether he's going to give it away or keep it himself. I I, th I think that um the two the, the, the players involved need to really get that communication down. Medley to pass, short over the middle, complete to Devin Forts. He's got another first down for the boxers. And Forts already has uh, been instrumental in this game with a couple of receptions already. Shula Hall and Isaiah Laguerre lined up to the near side. Forts, the man in motion. The give to Amik Watterson, lowering the shoulder and taking some serious punishment on his way to a gain of about six yards. Yeah, Kamari Jones nailed him and dropped him right there at the uh, at the 35 yard line. And that was a strong hit. Kamari Jones, the uh, 5'8", 175 pound senior linebacker. Four receiver set, Medley in the gun. To his right is Noah Olawu. 
Medley back to pass. Escapes a couple of tackles in the backfield. Medley's got a hole. Devontae Medley for first down, ripped down by his neck. No flags thrown. Yeah, it was a tough tackle by um, Sammy Lamothe. Safety, 5'11", 185 pounds. Medley back to pass again. Over the middle, oh. it's gonna be tipped and oh. almost intercepted. Number nine was back trying to grab that one. That is Luis Dorsario. And Laguerre went up to try and bring that down. The ball was definitely too high. And uh, the ball went flying up in the air, like you said. Number nine, Luis Dorsario almost came away with an interception. And Medley's got to work on that, keeping that ball down. Second down and 10. Medley in the gun, Oluwu to his left, trips to the near sideline. Medley back to pass, looking for Navon Reed, and as you mentioned, he's got to work on keeping the ball down. Yeah. It's overthrown by about five yards. Yeah, because the defender was behind Navon, and had he got the ball low, Navon would have caught that ball and went into the end zone easily. I don't think the kid would have been able to bring him down. Third so, and 10 now for the boxers. That's two errant plays. Um, the play call was great, but the execution, something to be desired. So we want to keep the momentum going. This is a very crucial play right here. Now five wide and Amik Watterson not on the field. A timeout called by Brockton. And we've got some of the um, Everett faithful over here crying on the sideline. Rowdy. <laughs> Rowdy. Complaining about the uh, coach leaning out onto the field, trying to call in the play. It's a loud stadium. Um, it's not that big, but the, uh, the crowd is rowdy, the band is loud, so it's like playing 13 players, 12 players on the field. And part of the history between these two teams is the marching bands that are certainly adding to the atmosphere this sunny Saturday afternoon. Brockton's marching band coming up for their first away game of the season. Five wide, and it, once again, Amik Watterson not on the field. Medley scrambling. He's gonna be brought down after a gain of about two. It'll be fourth and eight. And that was good coverage by the uh, Crimson Tide defensive backs, because um, Medley had no receivers open. So he had no choice but to turn it upfield and, and pick up six yards on the play. Well, now it's interesting because the boxers are in that phenomenal gray area that we talk about. It's too long for a high school kicker to kick a field goal and too short to punt, so the boxers are forced to go for it here on fourth and eight. Medley, back to pass. Stepping up, throwing as he was being brought down and it falls incomplete. That's another thing that I've noticed with Medley, Brian. He always steps up into the defensive line instead of trying to move east and west to find some space. Yes. And I'll tell you, he, he missed an opportunity because um, Noah Alau, Alau was open on the uh, sideline. So now it's a run for the Crimson Tide. They've got a gain of about six yards. And that was again the sophomore. Number 20, Jaden Clairvaux.
Back to passes, Darty looking long towards the near sideline. And what an adjustment for number three, Ismael Zamora to grab that one as he was spinning through the air at the boxers 35 yard line. And that was a great reception. Moving him all the way down to the 35 yard line. Big first down for Ismael Zamor. Darty back to pass, screen complete to number two, Eli Auguste. He's got a gain of about four yards, it'll be second and six. A nice tackle by Isaiah Laguerre. Stopped him for a short gain. I couldn't put my finger on it, but I finally figured it out. The Everett uniforms look incredibly like the San Francisco 49ers. Yes, they do. Darty to pass, pump fake screen. Now he goes long. Intercepted by Forts in the end zone for a touchback. And that was fantastic defense by Devin Forts. Devin Forts having a hell of a game so far. Uh, with two receptions and an interception. And that was huge to stop the momentum of Everett as they were threatening to, to um, increase the score. No doubt about it. Duke Darty just, he wound up and cocked it and it went way too far. Well, I'll tell you, this wind is having, wreaking havoc on, on um, the quarterbacks. Now, all right, I'm looking at the wind, and maybe we'll give Medley a, a mulligan because he's throwing with the wind. So the ball very much could carry based on the way the wind's going. He's almost going to try to th try to underthrow it by three or four yards. Yes. Especially in those lofty passes over the middle. And he needs to keep it down, keep it out of the wind. Hand off to Isaiah Laguerre. Laguerre with a nice run, trying to beat his man. Isaiah Laguerre to the 30, and he's in the open field. Touchdown, boxers. And no laundry on the field, which is a beautiful thing. Because we've had multiple times when we've had touchdowns called back because of an infraction by the offense. No infraction today on, on this play, and Laguerre had a fantastic run. Broke through the hole and um, was unable to be caught. An 80-yard touchdown run for Isaiah Laguerre. He's two for two on the day. Two runs, it's about 96 yards and two touchdowns. That'll help his stats. The extra point attempt is up and barely getting over the crossbar is yeah. good. <laughs> it kind of scraped the crossbar as it went over, but you know, it went over by about. The, the, I don't the know. wind helped that one out. <laughs> I don't care, as long as it goes over. So that's two for two, which is better than he's had up to this point. 14 to 7, the score. Brockton on top of Everett. The perennial Super Bowl matchup from the early 2000s, the last two times these teams played was the 2004 and 2006 Super Bowls. Yes, I remember those games, not well, because my memory is starting to slip. However, I do remember those games. If you're the boxers, Brian, going into practice last week after the game against Natick where you kind of sputtered in the, the middle of the second quarter and didn't score for the rest of the game, the boxers had to go into practice last week saying we have to score on every single offensive possession. And five bringing the ball back. A nice return. Where's the flag? I mean, it was holding right there in front of the referee and no call. Opening up a, a further gap for um, Junior Stanley Lamarck on that And kick Everett's off coach was asking for a flag to, to the official. It, it would have gone, I think, holding against Everett. It was holding against Everett. No but call. I, 
I'm curious to know what Everett's coach was looking for in a flag. Yeah, I don't know. A carry and a nice stop. Clarence Jules on the carry. Gain of about three. And 10 seconds remaining in the first quarter. The clock will hit zero. And at the end of the first quarter, it's 14 to seven. Brockton on top of Everett in a heavyweight matchup here on the North Shore. A beautiful afternoon for football. Brian, what'd you see that you liked from the boxers? What'd you see that they need to work on? I think they need to keep doing what they're doing for the most part. Um, they need to try and stop those long runs by the uh, Crimson Tide and you know, just show up that defensive line a little bit more and you know, close any gaps to keep them um, from picking up big chunks of yards. Now, now, something that's interesting that's going on right now, we have both bands playing the same song at the same time. This is awesome, I this think, is awesome, I love it. I'm a homer, I'll admit it, but I think I gotta give the advantage to the Everett band who is dancing. Yeah, well, I, I don't know. I mean, that was great. I mean, because uh, the Brockton boxes started this, started it, and Everett jumped in there and picked right up, right where they were at, and it was just a battle. Battle a with the bands. Good stop, number six for the boxers, Josiah Asari into the backfield and tackling for a loss. Third and eight to go for Everett. And this would be a huge momentum, you know, momentum swing, well, it's not swing, but stop the momentum of Crimson Tide if they can um, hold them to three and out and keep them from going in the end zone. Three receiver set, Dawson in the shotgun. Quarterback keeper for Darty is ripped down. Might have had a gain of about two. And yep. Navon Reed was in the perfect position to um, snuff out that play as far as the option. Quarterback ran upfield and Navon was able to grab him from behind and bring him down. This will be fourth and five for the Crimson who are now put into the same situation that Brockton was in that gray area too long for a field goal. Trips to the far side for Duke Darty. Darty scrambling out right off the snap. He's going to keep it himself, and he's going to be brought down for a loss. It'll be a turnover on downs for the Brockton defense, and what a stop, Brian. Fantastic stop. That was huge. We needed that. Brockton boxes needed to make that stop right there to um, stop the momentum of um, Everett and go back on the offensive side of the field. 10.30 to go in the second quarter. Brockton looking to expand their seven point lead. Medley in the gun, surrounded by two running backs. Three receiver set, Medley keeping it himself. Up the middle, he finds a hole. Devontae Medley across the 50. Medley to the 45, brought down at the 43 yard line. And let me tell you on that play right there, I noticed about Medley. Medley is, is, has made some adjustments as far as the way he carries the ball when he runs. Because early in the, the first game of the season, what, we had six, seven turnovers? Medley, six, six in the first half. Yeah. <laughs> Manly would tuck that ball tightly under his arm, was, was not worried about any defenders coming in and protected the ball and picked up a huge, huge gain of yards there. Medley in the gun, three receiver set, two to the near side. They give to Noah Olawu, he's gonna be spun down for a loss of about seven. And he had nowhere to go on that. Number 15. Uh, Trey Sejour, senior linebacker, six feet, 225 pounds. Yeah. 
I just scanned the boxer's sideline. There is no sign of a Meek Watterson. So that's a potential huge loss for the boxers, their number one running back and offensive weapon, and also their kicker. Medley to pass. He's going to be hit and sacked, trying to throw it away, but his knee was down way back at the Brockton 45-yard line. It will be, let's see, a third and 22 to go. Yeah, that was, uh, you know, again, no open receivers. Medley held the ball too long. He threw it, should have thrown the ball away when he got to about six seconds. Held the ball too long to be standing back in the pocket, even though he was rolling out. Third and 21, a generous spot at the 46 yard line of Brockton. Four receiver set, Medley in the gun, Oluwu to his left. Medley to pass, stepping up over the middle, complete to Navon Reed. Reed puts a stiff arm, gets the first down, Navon Reed down to the 27 yard line. And number seven, Brandon Gibbs, defensive back, was the only player that had an opportunity to stop that that first down and he was unable to do so. Navon Reed, too strong. Third and 21, the boxers convert. This time Medley hands off to Isaiah Laguerre. Laguerre to the 25 yard line and flags thrown in late on the play. It's gonna be holding against Brockton. Navon Reed walking kind of gingerly back to the uh, huddle. He appears to be in some discomfort. So, hopefully, they give him this play off, let him go ahead and uh, recuperate, get himself back together. We wind up with a first and about 23. If my math is correct. Yeah, it looks like it. Close to it. No, oh, first and 20. They have to Ten get yards. to the 19 yard line for the first down. It is his first and 23 for the boxers. Yeah. Low snap, Medley back to pass. Short pass, almost intercepted, but it hit the ground. Number 15, Trey Sejour. <laughs> I'll tell you, we've been, we've been talking about Medley getting the ball down. That time he needed to get the ball, ball up. <laughs> <laughs> because now he's throwing into the wind. So, uh, you know, he needs to make the adjustment as far as how he throws the ball depending on which way he's facing. I think the, the refs whiffed on that, that spot. It was supposed to be 10 yards from the spot of the ball, but Isaiah Laguerre had a positive gain on the play. False start on the boxers. So it'll bring up second and about 26. You can see the Everett marching band getting ready for the halftime show. Gives a chance to focus for the next 642. Yes. Oh, that's it. Move. Go ahead. Nice to see you go. Goodbye. <laughs> Trips to the far side. Medley in the clean backfield. Screen pass complete to Trey Shula Hall. And that brings up a third and they've got to get to the Somerville line. Yes, they do. Third and 29, oh, 27.
But if they were able to get the ball, pick up about 15 yards on the play, give the receivers a chance to pick up uh, some yards after the catch. I think the look is Navon Reed in the slot over the middle. Medley back to pass. Indeed looking long for Forts. It's gonna be overthrown. And Forts was held up but no flags thrown. And that was, uh, I don't know, miscommunication or something like because uh, Medley was throwing on the go route and who was that? Devin Forts ran upfield and turned it around for a button hook. Low snap bouncing and able to punt it away. But Short taking a nice Brockton bounce, fielded at the 15 yard line and a run back of about six yards. Nice recovery by the kicker. Able to get to catch that ball low, collect itself and kick that ball and got it inside the 20 yard line. With a short run back, like good, you said. Good news for all who are wondering, Everett brought a backup band to take the place of the Everett High School marching band. For oh, this the, is the kids. This is the junior Everett, high school. The junior this, high This kids. looks like junior high. Yeah. Come on, kids, let's see what you can do. High snap. The handoff and cut down at the line of scrimmage. And if the Jayden Bucks Clairvaux. were able to, to uh, hold them to a quick three and out, they could get the ball back with some time left, put some more numbers up if possible. A lot of time left on the clock, five minutes remaining in the uh, first half. Man coverage on the near side, Eli Augusta against Adrian Filet of the Boxers. It's gonna be a run to Clairvaux. Clairvaux losing his balance, getting to the 35 yard line. Enough for a first down and he looks like he's hurt. And he's coming off the field. Favoring that right leg. Darty in the gun. They give to now number 14. That's Gasari Lee. Nice stop there by, bo by the boxes. Stopping it for no gain. Minimal gain. Half a yard. Play action pass complete to number 11, Tyrese Baptiste. And that was a good call. I mean, hitting him over here in the sidelines, and he's able to just get out of bounds and stop the clock after uh, picking up that first down. 3.40 to go in the first half, 14 to seven, Brockton on top. The handoff to Lee, he's brought down for a loss of two. That's Clarence Jules on the carry. Fantastic tackle by Gio Brown. Was able to get him quickly in the backfield and uh, bring him down for a loss of two yards. Second and 12 to go for the Crimson Tide. Three receivers set, Darty rolling out to his right, throwing across his body, complete to Tyrese Baptiste. That was a beautiful pass. Rolling out, like you said, he's rolling out to his right and was able to throw it downfield for a large pickup. 
Still a whole lot of time left in this half. Two minutes and 50 seconds. First and 10 for Duke Darty's offense. In the gun. Nice run for Clarence Jules. And Legard hit him low, hit him right on his thighs, took him down after a pickup of about six yards. Nice tackle. Darty in the gun. They give to Jules right up the middle. And he's got enough for another Everett first down. Jules, the ball carrier. And that's good for another Crimson Tide first down. Two minutes to go in the second quarter. And I'll tell you, the boxers would love to go into the uh, locker room up by seven. So they need to tighten up defensively and stop the momentum of the, of the uh, Everett Crimson Tide. Darty back Ooh, to 13, pass wide open. over the middle. He's got his man right over the middle. Josh Neves. 13 was wide open. Josh Neves and Duke Darty. That's a great name. Hit him right in stride. So first and goal. Time I'll call by Brockton with 1.02 to go. First and goal from the six yard line for Everett. And the way Everett's been running the ball, Brockton needs to be ready for a running play. They've been doing a lot of bouncing it to the outside, but they've also gone right up the middle. But I'd watch for the, uh, you know, the bouncing to the outside, trying to follow his blockers, get to the end zone on the sideline. We just had a swing and a miss for the middle school marching band. What happened? They, they went to play Louie Louie and the trumpets weren't paying attention to the call. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the director goes one, two, one, two, three, four, silence. <laughs> I'm trying to cue it up again. Look at Mad Dog, multitasking, watching the game and watching the uh, the junior. Darty in the gun, the give to, is that number 20? Nice in. stop. Jaden Clairvaux back in action. He was hurt a little bit earlier, but it's going to be Flag. illegal formation against Everett. So now it's first and goal from about the 11. Giving the boxers that much more breathing room on what could be the last drive of the first half. Just under a minute remaining in the half, 57 seconds. Three wide for a Duke Darty. Clairvaux to his right. They give to Clairvaux. He's going to walk into the end zone. Touchdown, Everett. And he just ran over Rodrigo Lima. But by the time he got to Lima, he had already broken a couple of tackles. So.
with three marching bands in attendance. They played a recording of a marching band playing the Notre Dame fight song. Interesting formation here for the Crimson Tide on the extra point attempt. Now they're going to move and that's gonna be illegal shift. Beautiful, back them up. We'll take a one point you, lead. You figure that has to be a legal shift, right? You can't have every member of the offense except the kicker. On the the How's that gonna go against the boxers? Wow. That was an illegal shift too. Yes. Where and we now have? they're gonna go for two. All right, boxers. This is where you shore up. Show up that uh, that line because they're gonna try and punch it in. How is that not an illegal shift? We all know. Even even one of the um, Everett fans in the there we go. Stop him. Clairvaux gets across the line barely. As I was saying, one of the uh, parents or ever supporters here in the in the um, in the stands also agreed with us. That was an illegal shift. I tell you what, and I'm sure it's it's across the district, but the boxes continuous continuously get pencil whipped with um, bad calls. Game after game. So it's 15-14 Everett. 51 seconds to go in the first half. Which is a lot of time, actually. drive end over end kick is going to make its way into the end zone for a touchback and that was a well placed kick to kick it away from Laguerre because Laguerre is a threat to run it back Laguerre threatening Amik Watterson for the boxers touchdown lead he's got now four on the season to Watterson's five Watterson has not been seen on the boxers sideline since about halfway through the first quarter. He's there. He's at the uh, right end of the bench. See him with the afro? Yes. No helmet, though. No helmet. No helmet so, within about five yards of him. So there is something. Uh, affecting Watterson that has taken him out of the game. The fact that there's no helmet there tells me that he might have taken a shot to the head. Yes. Whatever it is. And he just got up. I'm sure he's disheartened because this is an important game. And for him to uh, be sidelined, not be able to participate. But he's moving... Uh, up. Standing oh, next to the coaches. He's actually moving next to the coaches. He might be trying uh, to plead trying his to... case for a return here. <laughs> yeah, I would think that would be the case. And that's what you want with your players. You want your players to um, want to play. A couple of knees for Brockton and the end of the first half is upon us. The score 15 to 14. A one-point lead for Everett, but coming in, you thought it could have been a lot worse than that, and Brockton's been hanging tough. Well, yeah, and they actually got out to, um, they scored first, and they've made a couple of great drives, was able to get up to 14 points. They played pretty good defense, have been able to stop Everett on a number of drives, but um, Everett going into the locker room up by one point. 96 yards, two touchdowns for Isaiah Laguerre. Brian, talk about his performance in the first half. Laguerre has been outstanding. Um, we're going to need more of that in the second half. He's going to have to keep up that, that momentum, keep his focus, and um, continue to put the, put the uh, boxes on his back and try and carry the team. But 
there's been many players that have um, done very well up to this point. I mean, we could Navon Reed has done fantastic. Devin Forts, multiple plays and an interception. So we need uh, continued play by all players. Well, two halftime performances to watch, first by Brockton High and then the Everett Crimson Tide Marching Band. We're going to step aside, take a short break. 15 to 14, your score at halftime. Let's enjoy the halftime show.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, I do want to announce the winner, the winning ticket for our 50 50 raffle is a blue ticket, number 259158. Blue ticket, 259158. Again, that is a blue ticket, 259158.
Gentlemen, boys and girls, football fans of all ages, welcome back into Everett Memorial Stadium for second half action between your Brockton boxers and the Everett Crimson Tide. Once again, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson. Join alongside BMAD Brian Madden for a classic matchup between the two winningest high school football programs in Massachusetts history. The score is 15 to 14 with the Crimson Tide on top by one, scoring off a two point conversion in the last minute in that first half. Amik Watterson, just to give you the bullet points of the first half, Amik Watterson, the top boxer offensive threat, did not play in that second quarter. He is on the boxer sideline without a helmet. Isaiah Laguerre has picked up the slack as he is doing now. Isaiah Laguerre, we're returning it to the 50, the 40, the 30, turning the corner, the 20, the 10. Isaiah Laguerre running it back to the house on the opening kickoff of the second half. And what a tone setter for the second half for Isaiah Laguerre, his third touchdown of the day. Laguerre is on fire. I mean, they gotta make sure, the Laguerre family needs to make sure they get this for the demo tape. Um, what a run back. And, and I love the way he just kinda slowly, he got the ball and he just watched how the defense was setting up and was it, the special teams was setting up I was able to pick a hole and just fly through it. The only one that had a chance to get him was the kicker, and he blew past him like he was standing still. Three touchdowns on the day, a close to 200 yard effort for Isaiah Laguerre so far today. The extra point is up and good. What a way to open the second half. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, that, that's the way to open the second half because at the um, end of the halftime show, as the Crimson Tide was over here on the sidelines, they were chanting something. I was unable to hear what it was or understand what it was, but they were out here doing some sort of chant. And um, after that Laguerre run, they shut up. A whopping 13 seconds into the second half, Brockton takes back the lead. That is the first return for a touchdown we've seen from the boxers so far this season. And that was a great one and a great time to do it. I mean, because, um, you know, I'm sure many, many fans, even myself, was um, wondering how the boxers were gonna fare up here in enemy territory. And we talked about the swing of momentum that Crimson Tide took a lead their first lead of the game going into the last minute of the second half, of, of the first half rather. And then you've got the run back like that. We weren't sure what Brockton was gonna do coming out of the, the locker room at halftime as far as, well, we just gave up the lead, this could be it. Everett is off and running now, but answering. They answered quickly. They answered in, in you know, like 10 seconds. So the boxers need to, um, continue to keep their momentum going and, is, and tighten up their defense. I mean, for the most part, they've had a great defensive stand. Um, there's been a couple of, well, as you see by the score, 15 points, two touchdowns, and a, a two-point conversion, a couple of miscues, but um, they need to just continue to uh, show up their defense and, and, and maintain this, this momentum going. Illegal block on the back on the return for Everett. Backs him up to, well, they started at their own 14 yard line. Jaden Clairvaux with both of the Everett touchdowns. The ball carrier to open the first drive for the Crimson Tide. Brockton in there visiting white jerseys, white pants, black trim around the maroon numbers. And the San Francisco 49, I mean the Everett Crimson Tide in their red jerseys 
black trim and gold around the white numbers. Everett's got the advantage as far as all time wins go. 811 to 799. What a way, if Brockton's able to hold this one out, what a way to get the 800th win in program history. Yes, oh, that would be awesome. They just need to continue to um, stay focused and continue to show up their defense because the offense is doing their job and the defense for the most part is doing theirs. They've, they've made a, a number of stops. They've hit, Crimson has had to punt a couple of times. Keep that going. I believe that was Clarence Jules on the carry for the Crimson. That was Jaden Clairvo. Second and a long nine, almost nine and a half yards. 21 to 15 the score. Brockton on top early in the second half. Darty to pass. Just about a yard and a half too long for number 11. Therese Baptiste. Flag way back in the offensive backfield. So that should be going back. Personal foul. Roughing the passer on Brockton. So it'll be a 15 yard penalty and a free first down for Everett. And I didn't see the uh, play in the backfield. I was too busy watching the receiver. So that moves the ball up to the 44 yard line. And for the most part, the game's been pretty clean. There's been a couple uh, flags, few infractions, but um, nothing major. Duke Darty, the senior quarterback of the Crimson, back to pass. Long spiral towards the near sideline, overthrown to Tyrese Baptiste. And when Duke Doherty is experiencing the same trouble that um, Medley was facing when he was throwing in this direction, the wind is, is to his back. So if you put a little oomph in it, it's gonna sail. Strong wind coming off of the harbor. Doherty in the shotgun. The give to Jaden Clairvaux. He's got a first down. He went for a ride at the end of that one. Yeah, Laguerre got him low and took him down, but had he got past Laguerre, he was off to the races. First and 10 now on the boxer side of the field. Right around the 44 yard line of Brockton. Three wide receiver set, Darty over the middle. And a nice catch for Ismail Zamor. And that was a bullet that Darty threw, hitting Ismail right in the numbers. Picking up another first down. That was a great throw. First and 10 from the 32.
Looks like he's changing the call on the, on the field. To give to number 11, that is Baptiste, lining up as a running back. Gain of about four on the play. And they're just... Sideline interference against Brockton. That's their first one. Sideline interference against Brockton is the call. So that could be the coaches on the field. That could be the players up on the big white sideline. No explanation on what prompted that call. Only a warning. This Three time. Receiver set. Darty rolling out to his right, throwing to the sideline. He's got Ismail Zamor. And Darty, 5'11, 190 pounds. He's um, been pretty accurate, especially on this drive. He had that one couple of plays that uh, it sailed over the receiver's head, but since then he's got the ball down. And he's hit his, his receivers right in the numbers. Ever threatening here, first and 10 in the red zone. They give to Clairvaux, and he's pushed out of bounds after a gain of about six. Everett's in the red zone. Right on the 15 yard line for Duke Darty. Three receiver set. Darty in the gun, Clairvaux to his right. They give the quarterback keeper for Darty's wrapped up after a gain of about two. Tackled by Rodrigo Lima. And it's four down territory in this in this part of the field. So third and three. I would think that they would keep it on the ground on this play and try and pick it up. And if not, eat up enough of the that three yards Brockton's to go for it two times. Brockton's gonna ball burn their first time out of the half. And that's a good timeout, you know. Get your uh, defense in sync. Be ready for anything. Princeton have been very accurate in the air, and they've been um, able to move the chains on the ground. So they're a threat either way. But I know the Broxers would love to uh, maintain the six-point lead. Halfway through the third quarter. Third down and three. Third and three to go for the Crimson. Clear vote to Darty's left. Three receiver set, flag thrown in from the backfield, uh, the secondary. Uh, 12 men on the field for the boxers. Again, that's the second time they've been called for 12 men. Yeah. So it's first and goal now from the nine yard line. Clairvaux to Darty's left. Boxer stacking the box. They give to Clairvaux and number 73 was in on the tackle for Brockton. That's big Jose DePina. And the Brockton boxers collectively 
stopped that um, run and stopped him for a no goal, no gain. Now if the boxers could continue to um, clog up that middle, But watch out for Clairvaux bouncing to the outside. Or Baptiste. Man in motion, high snap. It was a design fake. And the boxer's able to read it, but able to get to the five yard line was number 11, Tyrese Baptiste. That was a weird looking play. It was. Darty faked the high snap, but in almost like he was playing taps, received the snap in his open hands and just tapped it to Baptiste, who was on the end around uh, run. Yeah, that's a dangerous play. Darty in the gun, three receivers set. Baptiste on the right side, Clairvaux to Darty's left. The give to Clairvaux, he's brought down at the five. Shut down immediately. And that brings up fourth and goal from the five yard line. What a defensive stand for Brockton. Fantastic defensive stand. Now, are they going to- now, um, don't jump off sides. Yeah, they need to be prepared for that. No illegal substitutions, any of that. Referees keeping the whistles in their pocket. Boxers have 11 on the field right now. So yes, that crosses I was, off the- I was, I was <laughs> counting as well. <laughs> Be prepared for the hard count here if you're the Brockton defense. Darty in the gun. Three receivers set, two to the far side. Ball is snapped, Darty rolling out to his right. And it's gonna be a turnover on downs, falling incomplete, intended for Ishmael Zamor. Yes, and you know, if there was a small window there for him to hit the receiver, and he missed that opportunity. He held on for a little bit, he maybe held on three just, seconds too long. Yes, and the boxers were, uh, were able to um, tighten up defensively and contain their receivers. F huge stop, huge stop for boxers. But now, because it works both ways, the boxers staring at a 95-yard field in front of them. So first and 10 from right about the five yard line for Brockton. Beautiful afternoon here on the North Shore. 79 degrees with now a slight breeze coming in off the harbor. Devontae Medley tossing it up for Navon Reed. Reed almost grabbed it over the head of number 14, Gasari Lee. And I'll tell you, that's the play right there. That's the play right there. I would do that again with Navon Reed's height over, um, who's that, Garcia lead? Now that's that's not right. There's You're no, telling me that no kid is 6'2"? He is not 6'2". It's gonna he's... be a jersey switch because the PA announcer said a different name. Oh, okay, must be a jersey switch because he's he's 5'8 at best. And that, that height differential is huge with um, and Navon's- And Reed almost got that. And with Navon's athleticism. I'd hit that again. Look at, look at how he towers over that kid. Be ready for it. Do it again. Snap to Medley. Goes to the far side. The intercepted. Off of the hands of Isaiah Laguerre. Intercepted by Brandon Gibbs. And it hit Laguerre right in the hands and went through. And the defender was right in the right place at the right time. Was able to fall down, catching the ball. Huge momentum swing right there. But it was a good call to go to Laguerre on the other side. Laguerre just needs to make that catch. First down and goal for the Crimson Tide at the seven yard line. That sets up a first and goal on the seven and Peter Colombo has to call in the defense to come up with another big stop. I think they're gonna run the ball. Touchdown Crimson. Tyrese Baptiste is the running back 
in the no receiver set every man on the line and Brockton couldn't stop him. No, there's nothing they could do with that. Oh, here you go with this, this weird setup again. Let's see if they call an illegal shift on this one. I don't, that know, is what, an I don't know what the point is. That yeah, what is that? That's yeah, a the stupid center play. lines up like he's snapping towards the boxer sideline. The kick is up, meanwhile. And I thought that might have gone wide left, but they call it good. Yeah, it, it snuck through the um, upright. But that's just wasted motion. That that weird setup they do. Unnecessary. Because no one's fooled by that. It's not like you're going to hike the ball and try and run it. So Laguerre to receive the second kickoff of the half from Number 26, Abraham Betancourt, the first one. He ran back for a touchdown. And there they go with that chant again. How'd that chant work out last time? Bettencourt to kick off. They want to keep it out of the hands. It falls to a Johnny Horn. Horn trying to move east and west. He's taken down at the 25 yard line. That's a smart move by Everett, not letting yeah. Isaiah Laguerre touch it. Yep. It was definitely a smart move. Um, sure. But the boxes, they don't have a short field. They're, they're at the 25 yard line. So, we'll see where they go from here. But again, the um, medley is throwing into the wind. So he has to take that into his mind as far as uh, adjusting how he throws the ball. Trips to the near side, five receiver set, clean backfield. The man in motion is Isaiah Laguerre, quarterback keeper for medley. Gain of three. Nice run by Medley. And Trey Sejour made the tackle. Hurry up offense. The give to Isaiah Laguerre, he's stacked up at the line, has a gain of a yard. And that fooled no one on the uh, Everett Clemson Tide. Nice stop, so third down and five. 22 to 21, Everett on top. Let's hear it, Crimson Tide fans. Four receivers set. Reed Forts and Shula Hall to the near side. Ball is snapped. Medley to Navon Reed. Reed still on his feet across the 35. It should be enough for a first down yes. for the boxers. And he was stopped. He was stopped for, uh, you know, short of the first down, and he was able to power his way and pick up that first down. And that was huge. That was huge. Medley in the backfield. The man in motion is Noah Oluwu. Quarterback keeper for Medley. Devontae Medley up the middle. He's got a hole. He breaks the ankles of Gasari Lee and Medley down to the 32 yard line. And if it wasn't for Samuel Lamothe, he'd be still running. 
Great run there by Medley. I mean, it was a nice option play. Faked the handoff and then tucked it under his arm and ran upfield. Broke a couple tackles while he's running and was able to get into the opening and Lamothe came up from behind and tack him down. Medley to pass. He's able to hit Noah Olawu. And we'll take a little dinks and dunks. Three yards here, four yards there. Was a gain of three for Olawu, second and seven for the boxers offense. Laguerre Shula Hall to the far side, Navon Reed and Devin Forts to the near side. Medley in the gun, Olu splits out to his right. Medley on the quarterback keeper and he's brought down at the 29 yard line. Yeah, and Everett's defenders got in there quickly. Quick Everett's moving third quarter. Yes. But Everett's defenders got in there quickly and um, disrupted the play. Medley did not have time to um, wait for a receiver to get open and they were able to um, stop him from making a large gain. So third and eight. Blazing pace set in this game as we are at the end of the third quarter, 22-21 Everett on top. We're on pace for the first sub two hour game this season. What a huge difference than we had up in Lynn. Had to be the longest game Two in life. Two hours and 55 minutes, the final run time on that game. But I'll tell you, this has been an exciting game. Um, the boxers have to maintain their intensity uh, because we've seen them play well as they are doing today and then kind of fizzle at the end. So they need to stay focused and stay Aggressive, offensively and defensively. So it's third and eight for the boxers. 12 minutes on the clock in this heavyweight matchup. The two winningest teams in Massachusetts high school history. Everett with 811 wins and the boxers trying to get win number 800. Isaiah Laguerre on the carry. He falls forward for a gain of a couple. It'll be fourth and about six. What would you do? You gotta go for it. Gotta go for it. Too short to punt, too long for a field goal. You've had success converting and. So what play would you call? I would go, I'd go I over the to top to hit Navon to Reed. Navon Reed. He is on the far sideline. Shula Hall, the alone wide out to the near sideline. Medley back to pass over the middle to Reed and it's broken up. That was broken up by Trey Sejour. Yeah, I don't know that I would have threw it right there in the middle of the field with three Triple defenders. Triple coverage. Three defenders right there. But they did listen to us. Yes, they did. But I would have had him go to the outside, something. You know, one-on-one -on -one with um, a little midget. Wrong, wrong call, 6-2. I'm sorry. Bad choice of words. Little person. It is the mismatch. He gives up about at least eight inches on Navon Reed. The pitch out to Baptiste. He's brought down for a loss of a yard. Oh, they're going uh, Every man on play. the line. It's gonna be to Baptiste again. No, a little reverse and into the open field is Clairvaux, Jaden Clairvaux is tripped up, a touchdown saving tackle. A phenomenal effort by number six of the Archie, boxers. Archie. 
Wanati. And Wanati, I mean, he was running, and he's like, I got to dive and just try and trip him. And that was a huge play. Sorry, Asari hurt on the plate, running over to the boxer sideline. A touchdown saving tackle, and there's a player back way at the 29 yard line where that play originated. Jerry Connor attending to the hurt boxer. Got an injury timeout, 10.32 to go in the fourth quarter. And they're bringing in a couple of uh, players to help him, assist him off the field. Number 73. Let's give a hand for number 73. That's Jose DePina, who's Jose been Depina. hurt a couple times this season. Yes, he has. That and might it, may, be the... it, it may be a lingering Injury to his leg because, um, you know, he's limped off the field, like you said, a couple of times this season. This is left leg. Here we go, Lou. Back underway. It's a first and ten off the big gain for Clairvaux. Darty to pass. He's got Baptiste. Touchdown, Crimson. And Tyrese has had an outstanding game today, too. What's that, his second touchdown? 22 yard strike from Darty to Baptiste. And he was wide open. There wasn't a defender within 10 yards of him. Betancourt to try to make it a nine possession game and we, a nine point game, not nine possession game, excuse me. We go through the motions of the, the weird setup. The kick is up and the kick is good. 29 to 21 the score. The boxers now need a touchdown and a two point conversion. Yeah. That's definitely what they need to do. They need to touch down a touchdown to two-point conversion because uh, they don't want to continue to play catch-up. They started out the game with the first score and was able to keep their momentum going throughout the game. And then they like kind of stalled in this fourth quarter, but the end of the third quarter. So let's see what the Crimson Tide do, whether they kick it long to Laguerre or well, kick it short. They're also kicking into the wind now. Oh, this, it's gonna be short then. And kicking from the far hash mark is Bettencourt. Offside against Everett, so they'll back him up five yards. Which really benefits the boxers because they're already kicking short because they're afraid to kick it to Laguerre. And now they're backed up a little bit more, so the boxers should have pretty good field position. I'll tell you, where that offside's happened is number 24, Allie Fountain who goes down like he's a defensive lineman. See it right there. And he just got ahead of the ball. A very short kick. Ooh. And a run back across the 50 for number seven, Sean O'Brien. O'Brien on the return. He's tackled by number one, John Smith Howell. 
Yeah, John Smith Howell. Great tackle there because um, that was a nice, he had, had a chance to pick up some huge yards. So, they'll be starting at 48 yard line in Everett territory. Tapina is walking on the boxer's sideline under his own power, so that's a good sign. Still no sign of Amik Watterson, who hasn't played since mid first quarter. Medley back to pass, screen complete to Olawu. He's got a loss of about two on the play. It'll be second and 12. So George had a good game defensively. He's been in on numerous tackles. Uh, we got that mismatch with Navon and number 14. Medley rolling out to his right. He's looking for Navon Reed over the middle, and he overthrows him. It's that win. With the win. Navon had the, had the lane too. Was running the post pattern. Had the full lane in, in the middle of the field. Huge play right here, third and 12. <laughs> Medley in a clean backfield. Back to pass, looking far for the sideline. And it was Reed again in that mismatch, and he just couldn't haul it in. But it, it was contact before the ball got there. It could have very well been, um, could have been an infraction on the play. Yep. Pass interference, but there was no call. I still thought he had a chance to bring that in. Now the boxers lining up to punt. Amik Watterson is their punter. He's been out, so now it's 87. Kevin McCarthy taking the punt for Brockton. Nice punt. High knuckling, fielded at the 15. Trying to get to the outside is number one, John Smith Howell. And he able to bring it back to the 40. That's a nice run back by Hollow. He's able to get around that corner. Turn it upfield for he, he was taken down by number 15, Rodrigo Lima. And the marching band wars continue. I love these games. In the Everett marching band conceding this round to the Brockton marching band. I'll tell you, this is an important series right here. The boxers need to stop and need to get the ball back. Because if if they're able to, um, all right, here we go with the, <laughs> I love it. The, the bands are trading it. shots here. Yes. This is beautiful. This is beautiful. There's not many bands that can compete with Brockton and um, they're going toe to toe. The give nice. to Clairvaux, he's stacked up in the backfield. It'll be a loss of a yard. And Randy Jean Fasois, perfect. Hit him in the backfield, stop that momentum for a loss of down. This is awesome. Brockton's going to answer their marching band. <laughs> Kevin Cardell on the far side doing a phenomenal job. <laughs> and he slows up. <laughs> 
This is beautiful. And, and you know what? The, 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 the camaraderie between both um, bands is awesome because Everett's marching band and Majorettes are comparable to Brockton, and they're just going back and forth. All right, so that round goes to Brockton. Nice. Meanwhile, here's a nice grab by Tyrese Baptiste for no, a first Dave down. Ron. Oh, Baptiste, no, that's their team. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I saw number 11. <laughs> I was caught up in the in the, in the war here. Let's see if the bands are going to trade shots with this one too, because this is the boxer's touchdown song. Yeah, they don't want to play the touchdown song for well. Um, Here's the play that led to the last ever touchdown. Dawson on the quarterback keeper splitting up field for a gain of about nine. So it's second and about two to go for the Crimson. 6.50 to go. Boxers down by eight, 29-21 the score. Whoa. Well, that's a play, that's a push out really? the fact, and don't answer. No Number flag 34, on that? no flag How thrown. could there be no flag on that? Diamond Blakely was ready to go take one of the Crimson's heads off after he was pushed from behind after and, the conclusion of the play. And right in front of the referee and, 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 and no call. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. Had there been a boxer that did that, I guarantee you, flags would have been in the air. I think we, we got the spin cycle going on the far side with the tubas. Here's the give to number 14 for Everett. He's ripped down for a loss of two. Jaden Mahavier. And the boxer should have considered pushing him out of bounds to stop the clock. Because the clock is not their friend. Spin cycle. The spin, that's the official name. And and Everett, the Everett band is. And that's is, another round in the in the 15 is, round is cheering them on. I, I, I love how there's uh, you know mutual respect between the bands. So by my count, out of the 15 rounds, two have gone to the Brockton band and one has gone to Everett. Okay. And they're getting ready to do something with Superman. I just heard the uh, band leader give a directive as far as doing Superman next. Huge stop right here. Third and eight. Trips to the near side. Duke Darty to pass. Ball was low. It's gonna fall incomplete. Fourth and nine. Official timeout on the field. I think they're discussing whether they... Hey. The camera, go low. We might have had an injured Crimson on the field. Four and a half to go in the fourth quarter, Brockton Chasing eight points at the moment, 29-21. And they ha they can do it. They just need to stop right here. Fourth and eight. They need to stop right here. 
Darty back to pass. Rolling out. Darty's got a hole. He's got a first down and more. Cutting back to Darty trying Ooh. to flip into the end zone. And he's knocked down hard at the two yard line. Oh my goodness. Laguerre, Isaiah Laguerre. What a hit. But they had a couple opportunities to get him. And once he bounced to the outside, he was off to the races for an additional 30 yards. Wearing that hit is the quarterback of the Everett Crimson Tide right back into the huddle. I guarantee he's not running right here. Give to the fullback and it's a touchdown for the Crimson. Jashim Rivera on the carry. And the coach is telling Duke Darty, don't ever do that again. Yeah, he's, he's lucky. And he's walking on the sideline. He's excited. But I guarantee you, he feels it. And he's going to feel it later on today and tomorrow for sure. Timeout Everett, their first of the half, 419 to go. Brockton now chasing a couple of scores, 35 to 21. 14 point deficit. The and first multi-touchdown lead of the day for either of these teams. And I'll tell you, Brockton has been going head to head, uh, matching them point for point, and even started out leading, but um, for whatever reason, they are not able to maintain maintain the um, maintain it all through the whole game. They're not playing a full game. Thank God we're not going to see that weird motion. Ball is snapped. The kick is up, and the kick is good. 36 to 21 the score. Brockton now down 15 points. And the clock is not their friend. So whatever they're gonna do, they're gonna have to do it quickly. And I think they need one of those 10 second plays, run it back for a touchdown. If you're Brockton, you gotta move Isaiah Laguerre up. You can't bend? So Isaiah Laguerre is back to take it for Brockton. And they are indeed going to move everybody up about five yards. Laguerre right now standing at the 15. Kick. Dove it upon, but bobbles. And that's what you need to do. You need to just fall on it. Make sure you get control of the ball. And avoid any turnover. Devin DiCarvalho falling on that one for Brockton. a mismatch on the near side. There's three boxes and only one Crimson in coverage and Everett saw it and called a timeout. I think they heard me on the sideline. 
Yeah. That would have been easy pickings for the boxers. Here's your Louis Louis that they were supposed to play earlier. It, it took them like a full quarter and a half to queue it up, but they did. Brockton's band is over there jamming as well. Medley back to pass. Nice spiral for Isaiah Laguerre who didn't turn around in time and it falls incomplete. And he got and hit in the arm. He's over there holding his arm. And his forearm came down on one of the Crimson's helmets. And he's in some pain. Probably a stinger. Yeah, I bet you he hit, hit his uh, funny bone, which is never funny. I don't know why they call it that. Five receivers set. Laguerre, the man in motion. He gets the end around give. Isaiah Laguerre trying to find a hole across the 40 to the 30. He's chopped down at the 37 yard line. And Laguerre's tight, you know? Um, well, usually he's splitting both the runs and receptions with Amik Watterson, yeah. who again hasn't been seen since the middle of the first quarter. And he's playing offense and defense. Across the middle is incomplete. But he can't be your only target. And that was Laguerre again, who needed help up from that one. Yeah, he's exhausted, he's exhausted. And rightfully so. They need to go and find um, Trey. Well, Devin Fort's had a nice reception, and Isaiah Laguerre is indeed going to get a break on the far sideline. Yeah, he's exhausted. Shula Hall on the near side. You figure he becomes top target as well as Navon Reed on the far side. Medley is going to be hit and sacked. Quarterback sacked on the play by number 16, Jalen Murphy, and number 97, Puchel Hippolyte. One of the refs threw the turnover flag, the, the little blue chip that they throw. I think mocking with a play began or whatever. I think you might have thought that Everett ripped that ball out, but they didn't. So five wide for the boxers on third and 13. Medley in the gun, low snap. Medley in immediate trouble. He picks up Navon Reed, who almost lost it. He did lose it, but he's able to get it back. Back to the original line of scrimmage, and Medley took a huge hit back at the 50. That play was broken from the very beginning for Brockton. Yes, it was. And Isaiah Laguerre comes back in. Navon Reed to the far side, joining Devin Forts, Isaiah Laguerre, Trey Shula Hall to the near side. Medley back to pass over the middle. Forts got it. Or no, he didn't, incomplete. And he had the wind with him over in the, um, close to the end zone. Wide open was Reed. And 
mean, this is another disheartening loss. Devastating. Because you, you hung with them, you had a lead up until there was about 51 seconds left in the first half. And if you can hang with one of the perennially top teams in the state, that's a moral victory. Yes. Second and four as we enter garbage time. And they have another formidable opponent next week in Zavaria. Uh, two weeks. At two Zavaria. weeks from now. At Zavaria. Darty hands off to Clairvaux. He's got a first down. And that should bring the But I'll tell you, there's a lot of things that I saw good in this game. They played very well first half. Um, and they were able to go punch with punch, toe to toe with Everett. And they had a very good opportunity to come away with a victory. And you got to wonder what this game looks like if Amik Watterson is in there. Is in the game, yes. It very well could be a very different game right now. That was a huge um, loss for Watterson to be over on the sidelines. Darty takes a knee, he'll have to do it once more. But the final score of this one's going to be 36 to 21, Everett coming out on top. But a phenomenal effort, really through the first three, three quarters, three quarters yeah. before Everett was able to open it up a little bit. No team led by more than one possession up until Everett scored that last touchdown. Yes. But and, a good uh, effort for Devontae Medley, Isaiah Laguerre doing yeoman's work out there for the boxers. Yes. And it was Jaden Clairvaux and Duke Darty for the Everett Crimson Tide. Brian, what a classic matchup. Oh, it was awesome. I mean, as, as, as intense as the battle was on the field, the same battle was in, the same intensity was in the stands between both bands. That was a classic battle that, um, I, you know, I hope our viewers enjoyed as much as we, we did because uh, th there's going to be a loss of something on air. But live, it was awesome. 36 to 21, the final score. The Everett Crimson Tide getting the victory over the Brockton Boxers. Brockton moving to one and three. They've got a couple of weeks to prepare for the Severian Hawks. That game will be at Severian. We'll be there for you on Brockton Community Access. Everett, meanwhile, moves to four and one on the season. 36 to 21, the final score again. Everett getting the victory over the Brockton Boxers. For everyone here at BCA Sports, our cameraman, Mike the Postman Simmons, with yet another delivery to the viewers of Brockton. My broadcast partner, B-Mad Brian Madden. I'm the Mad Dog, Matt Nelson, and we will see you next game. <laughs>